Do you want to learn about some advanced attempt selection strategies so you can be a meat day handler and not make some mistakes at some higher level meets? Well, in this video, we're going to break down the 75 kilo men's weight class from this year's USAPL Mega Nationals so you can gain some tips and tricks when it comes to meat day handling. So let's get right into the video. Alrighty, what's going on my powerful people? In this video, we're gonna take a look at the 75 kilo open men's weight class from the USAPL Mega Nationals this year and take a look at the deadlifts, the first, second, and third attempts and how things played out and what changes lifters could have done to maybe improve their chances of placing higher. So here on my computer, I already have the, basically the meet results rebuilt here. And we're gonna take a look first at the landscape as we're going into the deadlifts of the prime time. So the first thing here to note is the, I have the results here on the left and then we'll do the attempt selection here on the right so the first thing we want to note is that there was already three lifters from the morning session they were not in the prime time that had a total here as we go across to the right of 730 for mark 730 for Dion and 727 for Kim so for these lifters in the prime time that's one thing they have to be aware of first when you're doing these sessions like in the IPF and USAPL does where you have like a late night session with the higher level lifters and the morning session with the regular lifters you want to know what their totals were and if there was any American or world records broken so that you know what what numbers you have to beat and what numbers you're allowed to take as attempts as far as records. So here, these lifters that are in the prime time, I have to know at minimum, they're gonna have to do the 730 if they're a lighter body weight or 732.5 if they're heavier body weight, as well as look at their own competitors in their prime time session. So looking at the prime time here, at these lifters, you can see during the squats, overall went very well. Charles here missed his third. Cho here missed his second, was able to come back and get on his third. And Jacob Ramos here missed his second, was able to come back and get his third. Looking at the bench press, some of the lifters that had made three squats gave a little bit of ground back so here you can see joe bornstein and eric lapointe missed the third attempt bench press so eric missed out here on five kilos and same with joe whereas like charles made his third and added on five kilos so he was able to like gain a little bit of ground ricky cho you know missed his third so he missed out a little bit there and jacob ramos missed out on his third so jacob ramos a little bit behind here having to retake his second and missing his third bench same with ricky cho and then charles only missing his third squat and then joe here and Eric missing their third bench and Anas Ambar made all three squats and all three benches. So he's looking pretty good as far as his subtotal. Then here is the openers. One thing that we don't see here are the changes. So if they don't announce on the live stream or we can't see it or whatever, we don't know what the original openers were and we don't know all the changes as far as third attempts, but we can go based off of what they actually did for their opening attempt and what they actually did for their third attempt. So what we can do here on lifting cast next is hit this forecasted button and it's gonna do based on if they make their opening attempt, what will their forecasted placing in total be? So now you can see how things change. You can see how Jacob Ramos now with his opener will be put into first place with 732.5 kilos. And then the rest of them here are below the three lifters from the morning session. So like I said, these are lifters will have to be taking note of that to make sure they're jumping these lifters. Going into Delif, where we try and think about who do we think here is in the best position going in to win? Not knowing what their PRs are, not knowing how their peak went, not knowing how their weight cut went. Just look at the numbers here on the score sheet because that's all we can look at. One, obviously you can say Jacob Ramos is in a good position since he's gonna be the highest after openers on total. The other one you can look at is Eric LaPointe. So if you notice, you know, a lot of these guys are in the 270. So you hear the 277, 270, 270. Then you have Cho at 280. And then you have Joe Bourne say 295 and then Eric LaPointe is the only one over 300. So one thing you see is he has the biggest deadlift. He may take bigger jumps. And if we slide over here back to the body weights, you can see Jacob Ramos at 74.76 and Eric LaPointe at 74.71. So Eric LaPointe weighs less than a lifter that's gonna be forecasted a higher total to him. So that's gonna be easier for him to just tie him on total and beat him on body weight because that's the rule. If you tie someone on total, whoever's a lighter lifter wins. And for the lifters that weigh less than Eric LaPointe, all these lifters, he's going to be at a higher total than them and the higher deadlift. So he gets to watch them, see what attempt they put in. So Eric LaPointe's in a good spot there. And then obviously Jacob Ramos having the biggest total after the openers is in a good spot as well. So what we can do now is we can start playing this through. So we can see here that first up would be Charles and Charles end up making his opener and going to 282.5 for a second. So now we can start seeing how the forecast of totals and the placing are changing based on what they're putting in. So Charles put that 12 and a half kilo jump to get to 730 and because he weighs less here than mark and dion then he's going to jump them in placing so he wanted to jump straight over those three guys and start focusing on jacob ramos and the rest of these guys as they're pulling after her, after him so he took that 12 and a half kilo jump so now we go to anas ambar who made his and he jumps to 282.5 as well so now you can see 
he's trying to jump ahead of everyone. So again, if we look at the body weights here, we can see Anas Ambar weighs less than Jacob. So based on the 732 and the 732, if Jacob only makes his opener and Anas makes his second, then Anas is gonna be totally more than him. So some of these may just be normal jumps that I take for lifters around this kind of weight, you know, 275 to 300 kilo max. They're gonna be taking around a 15 kilo jump from first to second, somewhere around 5% is what you can kind of think of. Some people might take bigger jumps, some people may take smaller jumps. So this may be like their original plan and jump it anyways, but it also fits well into the overall strategy here. Because when you have nine lifters, I know three of them were in the morning, but you have nine lifters battling it out for the podium and obviously for the national title, it becomes a lot more difficult. You can't just focus on one on one. Okay, what's this person doing? What's the jump they're taking? What's their body weight? Now you have to look at all these other lifters. Some are going to have a higher body weight than you. Some are going to have a lower body weight than you. Some are going to have a higher delft than you. Some are going to have a lower delft than you. So it becomes a little bit more difficult to keep track of everyone. And it can help sometimes to try and get as high of a placing as possible, for example, on second attempts to put you in a good position when it goes into third attempts. So you don't have to be the one who has to pull for the win. You can just continue to pad your total a little bit and have the other lifters have to pull for the win and miss. So then we go into Jacob Ramos opener. He gets his and then he takes similar 12 and a half kilo jump to 290. And so now you can see I'm forecasted now he's trying to continue to stay first. So he was first off of the openers and he's trying to stay in first off of the seconds, but obviously there's a few lifters after him. So Ricky Cho does 280, he smokes that one and he jumps 17 and a half. So now he's trying to gain some ground to 297.5. And so you can see now that would put him forecasted for now into second place if everyone makes their second attempts, but there's still two more guys to go. So then we go to Joe Bornstein who smokes his 295 and he takes a 15 kilo jump as well. and he goes Goes to 310 so you can see he's sitting here at third so jacob ramos is still in a good spot here and then finally our biggest delfter eric lapointe here hits the 302.5 and he jumps 17 and a half so he's trying to gain some ground as well and he goes to 320. so now we can see the layout after the openers finished like we said jacob ramos was going to be in first as long as everyone makes theirs everyone made there he is in first and then now on our forecasted second attempts if everyone makes their second attempts you can see now the three guys from the morning are going to be at the bottom seven eight nine and all our prime time lifters now are going to be in our top six so that could have been part of their strategy like i said aside from their normal jumps and then you can see how jacob ramos is trying to stay in first place while these bigger delfts are catching up to him eric lapointe is gaining some ground being the biggest delifter taking those bigger jumps and being the last person at Dallas. So he gets to see what everyone else is doing and then pick his attempt. So you can see he's gained a lot of ground now jumping the morning people and getting into that second place spot. So like I said, going in, I thought these two guys had the advantage. It had the best positioning possible. And now you're seeing that here. Now, if they all make their second attempts, there'd be one and two. Ricky Joe also made a big jump here to gain some ground. So you can see he's in third, oh, but Joey Bornstein does have the bigger delve here. So while he's two and a half kilos behind, he can always make a little bit of move at the end based on what Ricky Cho does for his third. So let's continue forward with this. Charles ends up missing his second attempt. So this is the, the first, you know, pivotal part of this Delif is here is Charles opener didn't look too great. It was a little bit slow lockout. The commentators on the live stream even said so. So 12 and a half kilos is kind of a big jump and he ends up missing it. He can't get it past his knees. So now he's really in a tough spot here being at a 717.5 kilo total and he just missed a second. He would actually have to go up further to catch up to these guys if they make theirs. So so he's in a tough spot. Then we go to Anas who makes his and then he puts in, well, I guess Charles also puts in the same 282.5 and Anas puts in 290 or that's what he ended up doing. We don't know what the original attempt was. So now you can see Anas here is sitting at 740 with the projected third attempt, which would be behind, behind Jacob. So either he would need Jacob to screw up and miss some attempts or he would have to bump up his third attempt further to catch up and take the gold medal if that's what he wants. And in Adele, if you're allowed to changes to your third attempt so that is a strategy that you can deploy is first just put in an attempt whether it's real or not real see what the lifters after you have the bigger delves do and then you go and make any adjustments that you want to to your third attempt so then jacob goes and he ends up missing his 290 so now here's another key point and this helps out people like anas is that jacob ended up missing a second attempt and so now he's in a tough spot here doing his repeat he ends up going up and going 295 so i'll just put that in for now but i don't know because i couldn't tell from live stream whether he initially put in 290 and went up to 295 or if he just put in 295 but you can see the overall strategy was to continue to try and stay in first place then we have ricky cho who hits his second attempt you know was 
all right. It wasn't super fast. I mean, he did take a 17 and a half kilo jump and I don't know what he had originally put in, but he ended up putting in 315. So he's trying to take, you know, another big jump to try and really gain some ground. So he's doing 17 and a half kilos and then 17 and a half kilos to really gain ground and go to the top. You can see even above uh, Jacob Ramos here. Then we go into our final two deadlifters. So Joe Bornstein hits his 310. And I think initially he put in some big number. I think they were saying he put in like 340 or something like that, but he ended up bringing it down to 317.5. So we'll just put that in there for now. So you can see initially he had a much higher forecast of total because he did put in 340. And then all he has to do is wait and watch what everyone else does. So we can put in 340 even to just to show it is this is how like the, la the landscape was is he was just going to sit there and wait. I'll wait and watch what the rest of you do. And then I'll come down to whatever number I need to. Then we have Eric LaPointe who hits his 320. And I think he puts in a big number as well. I couldn't tell if he put in the same number or not, but let's just put in the same number as well because both of them have the biggest delf, like I said, so they can just wait. So it kind of looks something like this going into third attempts here, where if we take off the forecasted, Eric LaPointe is going to be in first, Ricky Cho in second, Joey Bornstein in third, and then the guy chasing them Anas and Jacob in fourth and fifth with Jacob missing his deadlift here which really puts him behind and then all the way down here at ninth being Charles who missed and being really behind and then the forecast that you can see is that Joe Bornstein and Eric LaPointe are really trying to just wait and see what the rest of these guys do and pull for the win or whatever place they want to go to. And so these other guys are going to have to make attempts. So this is something we talk about on the King of List podcast. I talk about my other YouTube videos is if you're the person who has the biggest deadlift, you're at the advantage that you can just wait and see. Let everyone else do what they need to do. And then you just calculate the exact number you need to pull for the win. You put that in and then you go pull and you win. Versus if you are someone who has a weaker delve, like a Charles or a Nas or Jacob, then you have to figure out what you're capable of that day. And you need to make your third attempt. Because if you miss your third attempt, you're out of the race. The game is over. You, you let them possibly win already on second attempts. So again, once we go back here, Eric LaPointe here is in first on second attempts because Jacob Ramos missed. So Eric LaPointe doesn't even have to make his third. If everyone else misses, Eric points already your winner so you as a weaker delifter you have to go make your third and you have to go put the pressure on eric LaPointe or whoever else to go make their third go pull something they don't want to pull so as someone with the weaker deadlift we constantly say this you have to figure something that you know for sure you can win or you know for sure that you can get to put you in a position to win not something like okay you know 50 50 chance that i make this or even maybe 75 percent ch chance i make this you want to be like okay this is what i think i'm capable of or i know for sure i'm capable of and maybe even go a little bit more conservative than that so you say, okay, I know I'm capable of, let's say 300. Well, let's do 297.5. Obviously you may have to play with the numbers there a little bit, depending on what actually puts you in first on those kind of things. But you have to pick something that you know for sure, I'm gonna make this, it's not gonna be, you know, I'm gonna hit you, it's not gonna be a grip issue, it's not gonna be a shoulder issue. I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna put the pressure on those bigger delves that have to make it because I need to stay in the game. So then we go into third attempts now and Charles who missed his second attempt ends up missing his third, same issue, can't get a pass his knees. So he ends up missing his second and third and he's out of the race at this point. So now we're down to our final five. So Anas Ambar goes and makes his 290. So now he makes a perfect nine for nine day here. And if we take off the forecasted real quick here, you can see he picked the number that would put him into first place before these other guys pull. So he again, he's the weaker Delfter. He has to do something. So he's going to be like, okay, I'm going to pull. I'm going to get my 740 kilo total. I'm going to be in first place on body weight over Eric Le point here, 74.38 to 74.71. And I'm going to sit back and wait and see if these three guys can outpull me. If all three guys beat him, he'll fall into fourth place. But if only two guys beat him, he'll be third. If only one guy beats him, he'll be second. And if none of them beat him, he'll be first. So pretty good odds there that he just needs at least one person to miss to be in the top three. And if a couple of them miss, then he'll just move up from there. So that was the strategy there. And Anas had a really great day. They said nine for nine, making all his attempts, putting the pressure on these guys to have to go and pull. So then we go to Jacob Ramos, who missed missed his second. I believe it was a little bit of maybe a grip issue holding him back, but then he went up five kilos, which makes more things more difficult. And he just missed, I believe, off the ground. He rounded over a little bit, pulled a slack out, but wasn't able to get it. And so he misses. So, you know, he was in a good position here to be in the lead after first and try and hold the lead, but potentially just took too big of a jump or he had grip issues or whatever like that and gassed out and then fell behind. So now if we take off the forecasted again, now you can see he's down here at 732.5 down at fifth place. And Anas is now looking a little bit better 
there with only three more lifters. So then we go into uh, Ricky Cho over here and he ends up missing. So possibly went a little bit too aggressive here. Again, we don't know what these lifters top ends were and how they're feeling. The opener, I thought looked really fast for him, but then going up 17 and a half kilos, the second attempt obviously slowed down. And so it's gonna be very difficult to take another 17 and a half kilos. The second attempt has to move really fast in order to take, you know, 17 and a half and 17 and a half. Some people would maybe do, you know, 15 and 12. Like I said, 15 might be more of a standard jump at this weight. So you go 15 and 12. If you went 17 and it was slowed down, maybe at that point you only take 10. I believe the live stream comments, I believe Angelo thought like 305 is what Ricky had based on that second attempt. So he also thought, you know, should have gone more conservative and only possibly seven and a half kilos there. And also if we look at the layout before he takes it, so he was at the 735 here and Eric was at 740 with one more pull to go and Anas was at 740 with no more to go. So Ricky could have gone and seen, okay, well, what's my body weight compared to these two guys? So he weighs less than both of them. So he could have just gone five kilos to 302.5 to get to 740 and then he'd be in first waiting for Joe Bornstein and Eric LaPointe to pull. Or he could have gone a little bit more. Let's say you go up, like Angel had said, to 705, you go up another seven and a half, now you're at 742 and put a little bit more pressure on these guys. So you could have played it more conservative. You didn't have to go up to a projected 752.5 kilo total when these other guys are at 740. So again, it goes back to if you're the weaker deadlift, which, deadlifter, which he is in the case of Joe Bornstein and Eric LaPointe, then you need to make your third attempt. You have to say, okay, I think I'm capable of 310, so I'm only gonna go 307 or 305 to make sure I get it and then put the pressure on these guys to have to go out there and pull big but end up going a little bit too aggressive missing and then you're out at that point so then we go to Joe Bornstein like I said at that point he dropped it down to 317.5 so you can see what 317.5 does here is he's here at fourth place before he makes his third attempt at 732.5. So he wants to jump the seven and a half kilos to get to the 740. And if we look at the body weights here, you can see how Joe weighs less than all of these guys. So if we go back here to forecast it, you can see how Joe would be at 740, Anas would be at 740, and then Ricky Cho here at 735. So Joey would be in the lead then with Eric Point, the last person left to that left. So he ends up making it. It was a little bit of a struggle for him at lockout. It's always a little bit difficult with this narrow grip to see if he's gonna be able to get his shoulders back and hold on, but he ended up holding on, going three for three on the deadlifts. And now the pressure is on Eric LaPointe. So now let's look at the not forecast. Let's look at the actual placing here. You can see Joe Bornstein at 740, Anas at 740, and Eric LaPointe at 740. So the top three guys are all at 740. And so then it goes, like I said, to body weight. So Joe Bornstein was the lightest, followed by Anas, followed by Eric LaPointe. So Eric LaPointe's sitting at third place and he needs to make this final pull to go to first place. So he, that's his options first first or third so he ends up dropping down because all he needs is two and a half kilos more to just beat them so he drops down to 322.5 so if we look at it here now you can see he only had to take a two and a half kilo jump to 742.5 to beat those guys now you can see a little bit more into the Ricky Cho's attempt selection here of why they were going up to 752.5 more than what's needed here. Did they think, you know, Eric LaPoint was gonna pull 332.5, but even then you can at least get into, slotted into, you know, second or third place rather than being down here at uh, fourth place. So then uh, obviously Eric LaPoint goes out there to do 322.5, that's the minimum he needs to win. And it was a little bit of a struggle for him, just like once he gets to pass his knees and gets to his thighs, it looks like the bar kind of stops and he almost lost his balance forward, but he was able to recover cover and pull his shoulders back and lock it out so he makes it and then this is your final finish here with Eric LaPointe at 742 then you have Joe Bornstein and Anas Ambar at 740 Ricky Cho at 735 and then Jaco Ramos at 732.5 to round out the top five so you can see the guys who really executed on their deadlifts were the ones who placed higher and obviously it was a little bit easier for Eric LaPointe and even Joe Bornstein with the bigger delves to know exactly what they need to put, put on. But you can see how Anas Ambar started here with 270, one of the lighter deadlifts, but he first set himself up well by making all the squats and benches and then set himself up well here by taking jumps that he's capable of, knowing he can make it. So he takes a 12 and a half kilo jump and then a seven and a half kilo jump to put himself in first place, going into third attempt deadlifts and then waiting to see what these other guys do. And Ricky Cho and Jacob Ramos end up missing their thirds, allowing Anas to place higher. Even with the Jacob Ramos, you can see if he had stuck with the 290, he could have been at 745 if he had come back and get on his third. Or if he had gone more conservative here, let's say he opened up with 275 and then went up to, you know, 285, then he could have been at 740. He could have been up there, you know, at the top 
three over there are waiting to see what happens. So this is where it becomes critical to not only make attempts, but then see how things are playing out as far as the other competitors and trying to do the minimum you need to to stay ahead, especially when you have the weaker Dell. If you want to go too aggressive here, like the 295 and the 315, potentially even the 290, but it's hard to know during second attempts where you're going to need and then missing and falling behind and letting these guys be more conservative, take the jumps they need and beat you out. So hopefully you had some tips that you can take away from that. And if you want to learn more about attempt selection strategy, have other videos so you can check out my beginner attempt selection strategy video or my advanced attempt selection strategy video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.